And my next guest, uh, he actually laid out reasons why consumers are so negative. I'm going to bring in now a Discipline Fund's uh, founder, CIO, Colin Roche. And Colin, uh, the, your, the, your work focused on necessities. Uh, you know, it's like this is what really is hurting folks because the price of necessities has soared recently. Right. Yeah, I think that this, the last few years really speaks to the difference in the way that a lot of economists and even analysts like myself view inflation versus the way that real people see inflation. And I think that, you know, the Fed likes to look at things like core inflation, but real consumers, they focus on core necessities. And so I'm referring to, when I say core necessities, I'm referring to things like shelter and used cars and gasoline and uh, food, basically. So, you know, these are the sort of the four big modern items that I would say are the, the most problematic for the consumer, and they've all lagged wage gains. And that's really important because the way that I like to view living standards and improvements in living standards over long periods of time is primarily through looking at necessities. People look at things, for instance, in the year 1900, you could look at necessities like clothing, food, and shelter. They amounted for 80% of, of total income. So you had to spend 80% of your income just on those three items. By the year 2015, right. Americans were spending just 45% of their income on those three items. That's a huge increase in living standards. And this is all kind of, it's, a lot of it started to reverse in the last five years. So uh, these areas, right, uh, home prices, uh, gasoline, food, it seems like some of it's out, out, outside the reach of the Federal Reserve. How do those prices ever come down? Yeah, I mean, it's, well, you know, Fed policy is notoriously blunt. I would argue the, the shelter one has been the biggie. I think that's the one that, I mean, especially for, like, financial planners, I laugh at, you know, there's an old rule in financial planning that you should spend no more than 28% of your, of your income on your mortgage. That number is 40% now. I mean, we're talking about a humongous change in someone's discretionary spending if they're now buying a new home with a mortgage. They have to you know, cobble together all this other cash to divert from other things, or they have to be borrowing more, which is something that's you know, potentially more worrisome. So right. you know, can the Fed really combat this? It's very blunt. It's very indirect. I think it's slowly working its way through the housing market. You, know, you were just alluding to the data, the weakness in the housing market. We're getting there, and the, the Fed data lags with the way they calculate some of this stuff with owner's sure. equivalent rent and whatnot. But it's still, right now, it's still a frustrating time, especially if you're someone who's been prudent saving through COVID, and then you saw home prices surge by 50%, mortgage rates double, you're furious with what's going on because you feel trapped in a, in a renter's market that's increasing in price, and you feel like you're never going to be able to buy a home. Yeah, and we see that almost in, in every survey, you know, the American dream of home ownership falling further and further away, whether it's reality or not, you know, a lot of economists debate that, but people believe it and feel it, and they're, to your point, upset about it. Colin, thank you very much. Yeah.